Hello, everybody. I'm Dell Shores. And I'm Emerson Collins, and you're watching The Dell and Emerson Show. Straight talk. Real gay. Hey, Emerson Collins. How oh, are we you? Did it. We got th through the intro of the show that we did for three years. I know it. And, and I just want to know, does this, uh, does this Chihuahua Papillon make me look gay? No, the Chihuahua Papillon is not what makes you look gay. This is Sissy Marie, and she's very needy. I mean, we're both in the same city. Now, go on. Scoot along. Scoot along. We're both in the same city, but not in the same room. Correct. We're in Palm well, Springs, y'all. It's Friday. It's Good Friday. It's Good Friday. Do y'all know what Good Friday is? Do y'all know? That's when, that's when our Lord was killed. Our Lord now, was killed. Can I tell you something? If I was murdered, I don't want you to name the day that I was murdered good. <laughs> Good Friday. I've never thought about that. That's kind of that's Good kinda Emerson hard. died day. No, I want weeping and that I want it called a horrible Friday. The but worst it, Friday. It should be really, really, really bad Friday. Jesus got killed. <laughs> like it's just so terrible hard. Friday. Well, it, and it's also we're right in the middle of Passover. So there's lots of um of religious celebrations taking place uh very quietly this year. Yes, it's very, uh, how do you spend, do you celebrate, <laughs> who, like, celebrate Good Friday? It's like, you know, that man in the White House that tweeted, like, happy Good Friday. That's, this is not a holiday for that, for happy. I, you know what, when I was a kid, I just remember that in growing up in Texas, my mama Merck, my great-grandmother, Good Friday for us was the day we planted a garden. So that things would grow, and it was it's sort of like symbolic, you know, resurrection, new life, beginnings. Like water it with Jesus's blood, you know, just went out with the wine and the water can. We did not do that. We, that was with the Catholics. We didn't do that. There's so many part of that story that as you get older, you start to. Can you imagine? If I came to your house and you made that wonderful air fried chicken that you make so well, and then you passed it around the table and I went to take a bite out of a dark chicken leg, cause you know, I like the dark meat. And you said, this is my body. I would say, excuse me, I have to go. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> Be like, mm, would you like some Chateau Neuf du Pop? This is my blood. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yes, I don't know. I don't know. And that's that whole thing with the Eucharist, with the at least with with the Baptist. I mean, there are a lot. I could poke lots of holes in in our religion, but but at least we didn't think that it turned the blood as you drank, and that that was actually Jesus's flesh. And you know, okay, a quick story. When my daughter Caroline Shore was at Notre Dame High School, a Catholic high school, she came. Um, she explained the Eucharist. She says, can you believe that they believe this? And I said, I want you to do this in your religion class. Now, we weren't Catholic. It was just a good education. And I, and, and I said, I want you to ask the professor, what if after I ate the bread, when it went down, I choked, now Jesus is flesh, and someone did the Heimlich, would it come back up as bread or as Jesus' flesh? And my daughter said, I'll ask that when I'm a senior. <laughs> I'm still stuck back on how awkward it is that you choked on Jesus. Yeah, right. Not in the like fun way. Yes. <laughs> All, All right, right, everybody. We have a great show today. Yeah. Caroline Ray, genius comedian and friend, will be joining us a little later on. And then we will have very special music in service of the particular weekend from Tony Winter Levi Christ. And now we'll get on to the gay news. The Church of Christ, as he says these days. He has a new podcast, The Church of Christ. I bet, you know, yeah. I know a lot of people that would sign up for that cult if he just start, started out. And we forgot to say, Tony winner. Lee I Byron. did not forget to say it. You just didn't listen when I just talked. I don't always listen to you, Emerson. That All is right. not new either. We'll be away with the gay news. Okay. Two very ex exciting and important, you know, LGBTQ series had their finales this week. The first, Modern Family went off the air after 11 years. Ooh. It's crazy when you think about it. When that show started 11 years ago, like there was no Netflix, there was no streaming, there was, you know, there was nothing. And this big flipping of the sitcom genre to say that families across the country all look different. And now as it goes off the air, it's like a very safe comedy. But when they started that show and won five back-to-back -back Emmys, that was sort of huge visibility to have that level 
of success for a show really setting a family that looks like many of ours on an equal footing with several others. Yeah. And it, I hadn't and watched I'm, in years, but I'm really glad they I have to admit I have not watched in years, but I, every time I catch it, you know, I do enjoy it every single time. It's not like you have to catch up, you know? And then on the flip side of that, Schitt's Creek ended this week. And I feel like there's a really interesting correlation here because it's so of now, you know, this this family of basically narcissists who went on this journey that we sort of fell in love with. And the main character is a pansexual guy. And nowhere in the show is there any conflict related to his sexuality and who he is. It's just who they are as people. That it's almost like, be modern Family paved the way for Shit's Creek to be this enormously successful thing right now. You know, it's like every show stands on the shoulders of the one that built it. You had Queer as Folk and Will and Grace. It's paved the way for Modern Family, paved the way for Shit's Creek. And I sobbed in the finale. Well, just, well, there's just something so glorious. And Dan Levy, who is just brilliant, has talked a lot about wanting to make a world that showed what our world could be like. You know, not there's no struggle related to who he is, who his identity is, just the struggles of finding the right partner, fitting in with your family, all of those things. And I think it was such aspirational, feel good, smart, hilarious comedy. Um, and it's brilliant. And somebody asked, what is it? Uh, it's And it's been on for six seasons. So the first several seasons are available on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Yeah, just been it. I'm, I'm actually catching up. I'm in uh, like season three right now. And I don't, I don't want to, I, I you, you didn't spoil anything for me. I don't care. I'll just rewatch. I don't give a shit. But, uh, but I, I'm just, I'm just a little bit fixed on the you cried ever said, I don't remember ever sitting with you in a movie or a TV show where you, you, you got emotional. I love that you like to paint me like this person with just no feelings, just none. Okay, you have a few, like <laughs> like two a year. Uh, but you're not a big sob sister, you know. You're not. Come I'm on, not. you. It takes. It, it had to be very special. That was my point. It had to be very special. Every that story. is true. Um, also, if you're watching the broadcast, thank you so much for being here. If you are writing comments on Facebook or Periscope or YouTube, they will show up in my feed. We will see them. If you have questions for Caroline Ray, feel free to ask them. I'll give them to her when she joins. Um, and if you're enjoying the broadcast, share it with your friends on Facebook. Help us find more people. Um, and we'll start splashing on through the gay news. My first story that I really love, um, Ireland's last prime minister they elected, Leo Varadkar, uh, was the country's first openly gay prime minister. Now, he actually resigned as prime minister in February. His party didn't win a majority in their new elections, but no other party did either. So they're working on a deal that he may alternate uh, with a representative from another party. But he also just re-registered as a physician last month to help out during the COVID-19 crisis. So he will be taking one shift a week assessing patients by phone to free up others for in-person work. So I just love that this first gay prime minister in Ireland is gonna be doing double duty as a uh, doctor and prime minister. And that's just an amazing example. And I think he's also the one that had that lunch with Mike Pence and mother back in the day. Oh. Awkward. I'm just sort of focused on the fact that they're splitting the job. I well, just the way their the way their system works, it's like if one party doesn't win a majority, the the majority party gets to select the prime minister, and if somebody doesn't, then two parties either have to like come together. But he was staying on as the temporary because of the crisis. So anyway, double duty. That's a lot of job, doctor, prime minister, homosexual. It is doing some stuff. Three so, okay. In the in the in the gay news, we got Halle Berry in the gay news, which I loved when you sent me this. And she sends away the trolls. So Halle Berry recently shared a video of her son. I think his name is Maceo or Masio, and he was stomping around the house in uh, plaid pajamas and high heeled boots that are were Halle's white ones. Uh, and it said uh, quarantine teen day number twelve, and. Um, of course, all the bigots came out. And, of course. Yeah, all the trolls. I like to do most of the big bigots as Southern bigots. And uh, one of them said, I hope that's the daughter. And the other one said, well, and I, where are the fathers when you need them? And then, for, then they came after her parenting. And that's, I got to tell you, when anybody did that to me, it is, she 
she reacted with such class. I would not have acted as as Hallie. I would no. I would have. She was so great the way she 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 answered them back and said, "This is why." They, someone said, "This is why it's important for parents to have the control." So she insisted that he was having fun and to have a laugh and some compassion. Uh, one of her best replies said it best. Well, if he is a he and he is having a ball, then he's trying to cope the best he can. Laughter helps a lot right now. It's tight on these kids right now. And it's, she's absolutely right. And guess what? She got more love than hate. And that's what it was all about. And some, but one supporter, this is what I like. He said, she, he still walks better than I do in heels. In this like lesson. To you and your family. So how cute is that story? It's so great. And then a fun quick little story. Um, Ali'i Cravajo, the actress who voiced Moana, seemed to come out as bisexual on TikTok. She was lip syncing to this Eminem uh, song, Those Kind of Nights, and there's a lyric where he says, they're checking out the friends, and the woman says, so am I, and she lip synced along to it. And a fan asked for clarification, do you like girls? And she said, may I direct you to my TikTok? So that's just a fun little celebration. Visibility uh, is important uh, part of the community. And even as we're all stuck at home, you can come out and stay inside. Well, all you, right, this next one's just for you, Del. You, you know it wasn't going to just stay in fluff here, Del. It's a joke. Oh, I cannot stay in this bitch. I, I, and I shouldn't say bitch. She's just an asshole. That's what she is. Because a lot of women come after me if I say she's a bitch. But I, I say that about men too. So please don't write me anything. It's Kaylee McEnany, you know, Kelly, Kaylee McEnany, who she's the new press secretary. Now I've hated her for years. <laughs> years. I cannot. I've been. I've been trying to get her to block me on on Twitter for forever. Uh, if you don't know who she is, it, just Google her right now. She looks like that. She maybe came in second in the Miss Iowa contest. Uh, you know, with second really, is generous. Really, really bad talent. But she has a really long history of uh, anti-LGBTQ statements, but they're all laced in religion. It's always, it, which I found very interesting today when I went to her Twitter account because she used to lead off with Christian. And I would say, oh, well, you know, what kind of Christian are you, blah, blah, blah. But she claimed, you know, that equal rights was not, that was, that, that, that was not discriminatory and that transgender inclusive rest, restroom policies would enable predatory behavior. She really hit that one hard. Um, so our, she, she's also a lawyer and she mentions many, many times that she graduated from Harvard. So um, in February 2000, when the Trump administration revoked guidance from President Obama's tenure that advised schools to let transgender students use the restroom corresponding to their gender identity, Kelly McEnany again argued for the right of each state to make the policy. And she said that trans access could enable predators saying, this could be utilized by some men, for instance, to go into female bathrooms. That same old fucking argument. Uh, and she says it's happened at Target and blah, 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 blah. Just no, no specifics, just no specifics at all. And actually, the predators were that, that she was citing were men, straight men, that were coming in to restrooms, not transgender. Uh, so anyway, uh, she also uh, argued that Vice President uh, Mike Pence, despite all of his long history of anti-LGBTQ stances, is not a homophobe or a transphobe. So, you know, it, once again, Trump has just hired yet another asshole. But the good news is this. We probably will never see her. We never saw the last one. Stephanie Grisham, not one appearance. No. Here's the thing that makes me crazy about Kaylee McEnany, because she came in in that era when all of the news networks wanted to present balanced panels and they couldn't find anybody to defend Trump. So she arrived on the scene with like Paris Denard and Jeffrey Lord as people willing to say anything to be on television. And not so they just, they just defended anything he said and she failed upwards to his campaign and now she failed upwards to the White House. And I feel like Kellyanne Conway either has to be extremely proud or has like a voodoo doll, like jealous of her well, success. She's kind of jealous, I think, because she looks like like her ugly cousin. I mean, <laughs> if don't you think they look like they belong in the same gene pool? All of them. Yes, and nobody stirred it well enough. There's, all right. <laughs> good, Emerson. I know that was new. I thought of that right here on the spot. For you. Um, 
in in sad news, but uh, something to memorialize, um, Phyllis Lyon was a incredibly important lesbian pioneer. She died this week at the age of 95, and she and her partner Del Martin became started their relationship in 1952. In 1955, they and three other lesbian couples founded the Daughters of Bolitas, the first lesbian political and social organization in the entire nation. In 56, they started a monthly magazine featuring political articles, poetry, and fiction for lesbians up until 1972. They influenced political and religious leaders to become more supportive of LGBTQ people. They were active in San Francisco's Alice B. Toklas Democratic Club, which helped persuade Dianne Feinstein when she was mayor to sponsor legislation outlawing employment discrimination against gays and lesbians. And they were eventually involved in the fight for marriage equality. I mean, they were visible lesbians so long before people were, before it was safe to, before there were organizations and just an iconic pioneer whose life and work should be celebrated, who lived to a ripe old age. Um, and so just want to sort of shout out that it's a name people might not know as well. And they made uh, a huge difference in so many lives, including our own. So, yeah. So, all right. Well, we've got more bigotry in the news. We got uh, that minister that at the end that I keep talking about. Um, so we did, Tony Scott, remember him from last week? He's that one that he's facing all these misdemeanor charges because he held his services again. I'm convinced that he doesn't know how to live stream because it's just, it must be about money. Yeah. So he told, don't you think? Yeah. I mean, so he told TMZ that real Christians should ignore social distancing guidelines. True Christians do not mind dying. They fear living in fear. He went on to say that he would feel no responsibility when his church services spread the potential lethal virus. Yes, that we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil because God is with us. Death looks to them like a welcome friend. Oh, so many of the people have locked been locked up in their homes now for 23 days like prisoners. The only vent for their emotion they have is coming to the house of the Lord and worshiping like free people on Easter Sunday. So he's going to have his Easter service. And oh, I hope that they're just there. You know, they're all Trump supporters. I hope they just hug and kiss and touch each other and touch Speed each other. Get it along. Yes. Yeah, speed that process oh. along. That I will say that your preacher today started sounding a little bit like Newell Alexander in Southern Baptist Sissies talking about there were no Easter bunnies running around. Oh. Gaga. We got to post that this Easter. So, but I wanted to read a couple of scriptures to uh, Mr. Tony Scott. First Please of all, uh, instead of, you know, I would say first Corinthians, but so, you know, to honor the president, I'll say one Corinthians. One Corinthians. 619 says, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? So if your body is the temple, Tony Scott, of the Holy Spirit, then protect your body and stay in and stay safe, stupid motherfucker. And then Matthew, I love saying motherfucker, and Matthew 18, 20 in the same breath. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be with them also. You don't have to have a mega church, Tony Scott. You can have two or three or just me and three chihuahuas. Okay, I'm done. Rant over. Oh, so good. So good. Use the Bible. All right. Well, I'm on the obituary tour over here. So our next story, um, I wanted to share about Henrietta, Henrietta Robinson. She was a trans icon in Florida. She was one of the first transgender people to live openly in South Florida, which is, was a big mecca for many in the LGBTQ community in Fort Lauderdale and Key West. And she died on Friday of complications from the coronavirus at the age of 79. She was known variously as the mother of Miami Beach, the Grand Lady of South Beach, the Queen of South Beach. Uh, she played an instrumental role in the development of the area's LGBTQ nightlife and drag scene since 1959. That they said with her signature blonde bouffant hairstyle and retro 60s fashion choices, Robinson was instantly recognizable around town and a regular in South Beach gay bars. She considered Twist Nightclub a second home as she had a seat on reserve and her fellow patrons treated her like royalty. Even Miami Beach Commissioner Michael Gangora, who's the first openly gay person elected to the commission, talked about her impact on his life when he started going out in the 90s. Said she was kind of like a godmother of all of us, always somebody happy to lend a smile, a nice comment or word of advice. And I was just really struck this week 
and reading those two different celebrations of lives that were really important in our community, you know, I think about what the world was like for me coming out different from kids today and for you different from me and thinking about these people who were out in the 50s i don't mean you know quietly closetedly finding each other like people living visibly out and like paving the way for the beginning of the communities that are now the big queer meccas in the country and just how brave and insanely inspiring and risky that was to just stand up and live authentically yeah. when no one else was doing it yeah, absolutely. Do we have time for this one story, Emerson? Yes, do it, because I love this. We might I skip the Quibi stuff. This, this is, is just such a great... It's a UK story, and it's, it, this was on Reddit. And a dad, dad asked uh, some, for some advice. He said he got sober when his son was 12 to, uh, to remove him from an abusive situation. So his son went off to college, and he writes, My boy is 20 years old. He's absolutely my pride and joy. And there is nothing he could do that would ever make me love him less. He's everything a man could want in a son. He's uniquely kind, fiercely loyal. He's unflinchingly brave. He's incredibly generous. And despite the horrors he suffered as a child, he's unflailingly uh, positive and sunny to the level. So during the pan pandemic, uh, pa pandemic, the son came home and uh, brought his roommate with him. And the father started noticing some slip ups that they 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 were doing coupley things. He said uh, the, the they called each other babe and and sweetie and and then kind of backed it off. And so one day uh, he said for some reason he just decided to check in on his son like he did when he was a little boy and he peeked in the room and they were snug together in his son's bed because the the guest was supposed to be the roommate was supposed to be in the guest room. So he wanted advice. He said, I want to, to advise, how do I let my son and his boyfriend know that I'm okay with them being a couple and that they don't have to feel like they have to be around in my house. I want them to be comfortable here and I want them to know I support them both no matter what. I obviously don't want them to, to force either one of them out of the closet, but at the same time, I hate the feeling as, I, I hate feeling as if they feel that they're forced into the closet in my house. What's my best course of action? And so everybody wrote, you know, advice and gave him advice to to to, to tell him how much he they, he loved him, no matter what. And he says, so finally he, he did a follow up post post, and he said his friend was uh, taking a bath. He told his son, he goes, I. Love you, son, very much. You don't have to tell me anything you don't want to, but I want you and your friend to feel comfortable being yourselves in my house. Uh, and you don't ever have to hide anything from me, all right? Well, it turned out a hell of a lot of you were right, he says. The son burst out laughing and he said, oh, thank God. <laughs> I reckon you had clicked on it, but didn't say anything because I didn't want to make you feel weird. So he said, basically, we've both been pussyfooting around each other the topic. Or, and neither one of us will be the other one uncomfortable. And so now they are just one big happy family. And it's just a good feel good story. We have a lot of good feel good stories this, this show. Well, you know, I figured that yeah, I loved it so much. One, it was just the sweetest letter from this dad of like, oh, I, ju I just want him to know it's okay, but I don't want to bring it up. And it's just so sweet. And that when they finally talked about it, they were both like, oh, thank God. And, you know, that's part of why we're doing this show. We want to talk about the things that our community is struggling with, but also celebrate the successes so you all have something to talk about besides this crisis and speaking of which if you are enjoying the show we are artists we are at home trying to provide entertainment and if you just need to take a break and watch with us you are welcome to share it with your friends if you're somebody who is financially fortunate and you want to give us a dollar or five or ten or thousands uh because you enjoy what we're putting out there we will take it uh the banner at the bottom has it you can venmo me at Emerson Collins, and I promise to think about splitting it with Dell. Or you can PayPal us to Beard Collins Shores Productions at gmail.com. So that's our little commercial. You are not obligated. We're going to do this show whether you pay us or not, because what else do we have to do? It gives me an excuse to actually shower and put on clothes and a little makeup. Uh, uh, and you know, a little, little cover up, a little under eye to look like a person again. But um, here's but I, think it's, I want to say something about that too. We know also that there are so many people struggling, and there 
every single day, I, I, and at the end of this show, we're going to talk about other artists who are finding ways to entertain. And yes, if you can't, if you're struggling and you're having a hard time, no, keep your money. Do not, you know, do, don't worry. Make sure that you're okay. But in that, we also, we first and foremost want to entertain you. So that's... Um, and then one kind of final quick thing, because we've been enjoying this, I do want to just shout out one of these shows. We've decided to do little mini reviews of the Quibi shows, the new Quick Bites on that app on your phone, uh, because they have a lot of queer artists, uh, queer up and coming people that are being celebrated and given opportunities among the big famous A-list names that are also uh, on the app. And the one I want to mention today, and we'll do a couple each week, is Singled Out. Now, that for people my age, Singled Out was the hugest MTV show. It's actually the show that launched Jenny McCarthy. It's a dating show, and they've reformatted it and repurposed it uh, for Quibi, hosted by Kiki Palmer and Joel Kim Booster, who I think is a brilliant, hilarious uh, gay stand-up comedian. And their first contestant on their first episode is a bisexual or pansexual woman. So the 30 contestants were men and women, but it's the same Singled Out style. They eliminate them based on preferences then they asked them questions to eliminate it down to three and then they did a dildo race because why not um so check that out on quibi so fun and it's so fast it's like oh oh decisions have already been made yeah. all right well i've been watching her wander around her kitchen long enough i think it's time to bring our special guest uh into the broadcast of course now her camera's gone so this could be highly entertaining so let's see what happens if i add caroline ray Caroline, where is she? Oh, she just quit. She had been here. Like, I've been watching her, y'all, because I can see a preview of people before I add them to the stream. Wandering around her kitchen. She put up Nolita Nethercott as her name. So maybe she'll tune back in in a minute. Um, and we'll talk about these other two Quibi shows while she works out uh, the technical details. Um, yes. Text her and see what happened. Um, mm -hmm. Another one. Uh, that's new that I feel like is fascinating is called Murder House Flip. And it is about, they take people that live in houses that murders happened in. Cause you know, you have to disclose that before people buy a house if someone was murdered in the house. So they're just going around to murder houses and they do one episode that, oh, wait, she's back, she's back. Um, anyway, check that out. It's They take murder houses and then flip them. Let's see. Oh, look at her. Hi, Caroline Hi. Ray. I'm just wondering, why are so much shorter than you guys? Because oh, you right. framed the camera up lower. Tilt the camera yeah. down. Yeah, well, don't Hold put on. it that way. There you go. There you go. Look at you. See, we have to be our own camera people. You know what? I've just been doing... There. I, uh, I, I just wanted to give some cooking tips because people, they said, you know, just take some stuff around your house. So I've got some strawberry frosting and some um cheese spray some nutella and i'm gonna put it on a hershey's chocolate bar and serve it all of it for easter dinner yeah i, I think jesus would appreciate that <laughs> so, i didn't know so cheese goes with oh goodness i love that i please do it please do it caroline i would love you even more you're such if an you, asshole you just spread yeah oh. yes <laughs> Thank you. Can I tell you that I still buy squeeze cheese as like a treat to myself? Because as a kid, I got to buy it to go to church camp. And so I think of it as like a treat. And I'm not even sure anything in it is like a really edible substance. Did you just no, do a not. spit bucket? Was it a spit bucket there? <laughs> was it not good? You know, I've been doing a lot of cleaning. I've been watching. <laughs> but I've been wanting to perform quite a lot too. I've been missing it. You know, it's great being an older mother because I can um, help Ava study for her math test and she helps me study for my bone density test. Good night, everybody. I'll be here all pandemic. <laughs> I like, great. This is a great you want to my impression of Superman? Yeah. I hate you. I you know, here's the deal. 
They're the, the people that I admire the most that are so funny, like you, Leslie Jordan, are willing to make fools of yourself. That's what it's all about. Comedy is being foolish in a good I way. Just had, I just did a Zoom meeting with my family and had like four wig changes. And they were like, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, what is wrong with me? I'm an entertainer. Also, this didn't start with the pandemic. You've always been like this. Look, I'm not the one who invented jock straps on my face, okay? I have been <laughs> 15, 15 levels further. It's fair. It was That's like you've been, it was so flight attendant the way you did it. Take the bra strap, you did it. That's it. The most mortifying part is it took me all of 10 seconds to figure it out. Yeah, I was I like, a lot of people have been struggling. I was that. more embarrassed by how easy I accomplished it than by sharing it with the world. And the best response, I've been called an old gay by more 19-year-old homosexuals. Shut up. Someone oh, yeah. called you an old gay? Yes. Yeah. Skipped yeah. right past middle age to old. Someone, a crowd did. A whole crowd. <laughs> you know my joke that when people said to me, oh, um, honey, can you not scream and then scream walking in to say hi? Come here. Come say hi. Come say hi. We're on a podcast. Look at my little cutie. Oh. Almost my height. She'll be, you know, it's my birthday on Monday. I know. Oh, I always do stand up on my birthday and um, I'm going to do it live on Instagram. Caroline Ray for real. And then I don't know which charity I'm going to give the money to. That's amazing. What are you doing? Oh, what are you doing? You're, 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 I'm trying to stop you from eating a chocolate bar in front of me. Oh, uh, well, well, Caroline, what, Hi, you're being how, on the camera. How, since y'all are both there, what school like? Are you helping at all? Is I your mom helping with math. your school? I gotta be honest, math is really an issue. Oh, were you talking to Ava? I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> was, yeah Ava, what's your mom like as a teacher? Is that going well? Is that going well? I actually was a teacher. Mm -hmm. What? Am I good? What? <laughs> What'd she say? I have to get back in my Where's Waldo book what? in another two minutes. What? <laughs> beastie. That's what my daughter's being. A little beastie. How is it? How is it though, Caroline? Being with your eyes, you know, y'all are y'all coping well? Are y'all y'all doing all right? I happen to be quarantined with my favorite person on earth, so I'm kind of okay with this. And oh. I also have my 20 year old nephew who I could cry how much I love him. And what a help he is. And he just does, he like cooks and cleans and I'm making art. Do you like it? Yeah, I do. I feel like back lots back of people don't know how you're such a good artist. Wait, were you back? About me? Oh yeah, there you go. That's cool. I have one of your pieces. I have one of your um, pieces. You know what makes me laugh? I think about when my dad used to say, he loved Costco so much. He was always looking for an excuse. And he literally once said this. His wife's name was Mary. He go, Mary, we have to go to Costco. We only have six bottles of scope left. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Louis beard. <laughs> like when like when Armageddon comes and you've got a six foot beast, you really want to have minty fresh breath. <laughs> Well, let me tell you something. I used to make fun of my hoarder friends, but after this happened, when they all started bringing me over like white and, and wow. bottles of Purell, I thought, okay, good for you. You had them in the garage, you know, and 4,000 rolls of toilet paper. I know. It's Before long, story. people are going to be trying to tip like the Instacart and Uber Eats delivery people with squares of toilet paper. I, first of all, why does Emerson have such good light? I know. I was just talking about to that. Like this light is so much better than mine, right? Should that I? That was like kind of like surveillance footage going on, and then I just got the worst overhead lighting ever. But look, I set up. Look, there you are, Caroline, on my wall. I'm in Palm Springs. You're somewhere, somewhere here on my wall. You know what? Everybody should be that's home should watch a very sorted wedding. It's such a love letter to the community. Very and still cool. streaming on Hulu and Amazon Prime. You're so good in it, Emerson. It's Thanks. so well directed. And so it. are you, my darling. Oh, start. Best sex scene <laughs> ever with Mr. <laughs> Alec Ponovic. How hot was that? I have to tell, can I tell the fans how he got that role? 
Yeah. Sure. Caroline Ray said, I want this man to be on top of me. Uh, no, I did not. <laughs> yes, you did. I did, I did not I say said, that. No, I want you to be on top. <laughs> no, I said, and don't forget this is before we invented the genre of comedy porn horror. Um, <laughs> I said, I've got this really good friend and he's a really good actor and he would be really good. And you're like, Carrie, I cannot just in, you know, put someone on the show. Because you've asked me to, Carrie, I can't do that. No. Um, and then he called. Oh, no, then he said, can I practice my Southern accent? Because he's Canadian. Perhaps some of your viewers would know him as the white ape in Planet of the Apes. Yes. He's also and also Van Helsing, The 100. Van I've Van watched Helsing. like he's on everything. 18 he's shows that he's been on. He's such a sweet yeah. man, too. But, but here's what he did. Here's what he did. And, and you did you did something similar when you got the role of Nolita. He wanted the role. And he he literally auditioned himself on an iPhone and sent it to me. I still remember seeing it in my living room. And, and I'm going, okay, he got the role. I mean, just like that. He was he was that good. And I wouldn't be like, hey, here's this hottie that I know and he can't act. He's really, really good. Oh, and he was well, I would. and so sweet. Really, truly a good woman. And yeah. also that ass. What? And also that, that ass. ass. Oh, come on. I mean. That, that whole scene could have just been shot like that. <laughs> um, I, I, I said it many, many times to you, Caroline, on stage just because. But I said, you know, I really got it in one take. Those other 17, you're welcome. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to tell my favorite Caroline Ray story because way back when we met okay. you doing Sorted Lives, the series, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of that cast we knew and we didn't know Caroline until Del uh, cast her. And so she came and joined us in Shreveport. We'd been shooting for a couple of days before she joined. So the first day she's like, you know, I'm here and I'm very excited. And the second day, I, Rue McClanahan, who played, you know, the matriarch of our family, had knee problems. So Chris Pudlow or I had to help her walk everywhere she went. So I'm escorting Rue into lunch like she's my prom date. And we walk past Caroline Ray sitting at a table with like 15 of the crew laughing and everybody's having a good time. And Rue, dry as a bone, looks so it says, stop. She looks over at the table and she goes, well, that one's come out of her shell. And without <laughs> missing a beat, Caroline Ray stops the story she's telling, looks up and goes, oh, everyone, that's Rue. The D is silent. <laughs> <laughs> and I fell through the floor. Just yeah. two comedic geniuses bantering my young homosexual heart. That was when I was a young gay. Now I'm an old gay. Uh, you are not an old gay. Would you stop it? They love still, each other, you, right? I mean, how about when I'm... <coughs> don't cough, don't cough. We get worried. <laughs> I have really bad allergies and I've never been more paranoid about them in my entire life. No. Same. Um, I, um, when, when sitting in between, you know, Rue McClanahan and Olivia Newton-John with my inner teenager completely, my head exploding. And they'd Correct. be like, and, and Olivia would be like, hey, you? And I'm like, hopelessly devoted to you. Right. Thank, and then to Rue, thank you for being a friend. That's all I can yes. say. Over and over and over in my head. Good times. So Those good. were the best. Oh, my God. I laughed so hard filming that series. Oh, my God. And that then you and Ann Walker awesome. at those casinos at 3 a.m. Didn't we do like 15 scenes a day? Yeah, at least. <laughs> it's really the only way to work. And well, you did. I mean, and you just nailed it. I mean, and and and, and all, we always talk about how I always talk about how brave you were. Yeah, brave is show business for fat. Okay. <laughs> right. This is a family show. Brave. This is a family. I have done more humiliating scenes for you than any. Well, no, there have been a lot. I, I I have a way of being a little bit manipulative. I know that. You are manipulative, but you're the best director that I've ever worked with. Oh, ever. thank you for saying that. Thank you for being on my show and saying that. No, it's well, true. Well, you're a, you're a good person and you're a good friend. And, and I, I'm sorry that we're all having to go through this because I miss you. I miss coming over at 11 o'clock at night where you spontaneously say, what are you doing? Come over. Oh, now, what we if I get my daughter in bed by 1 a.m., I think I'm a pretty good mother. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
I've invented a word. It's called the day blurs. And it's when you can't tell which day it is. And you can't tell if you've accomplished anything that day or not. And then you're like, is it Wednesday or is it June? Those are called the day blurs. And I have those sometimes. Well, do they have a plan for your show to go back? Is there anything at all? or is it... um, Nobody knows anything. <laughs> I love Sorry. the The tour around the island is the hist Is that like, is that your workout route? Like just run? Just I... running around the island? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> So, so Caroline, I know that every time uh, Superman from this, oh, he's back. He's back. Superman's going back. home. Woo! He flew from one side. To the other. I'm losing it, you guys. I think uh, that's evident. Okay. That's not because of this crisis. You know what? Back off. I um, <laughs> I was asked to go on a social distancing walk. I'm like, do you want to go pre or post apex or up and down the curve? Okay. The only place that I'm going for a walk is through a car wash. That is the only date that I would go on right now. Oh, is it so clear? Shall we? Shall we tell people how busy you've been? I mean, you're doing you're doing a Disney series called Sydney to the Max. But I just read that you're you you did the Phineas and Ferb the movie. I did do Phineas and but I couldn't tell anybody. It was like top secret. Well, it's it's on IMDb now, so now we we all know. So when do when is the release date? Um. I have no idea. I want you to watch the um, Women of a Certain Age special on Showtime. When is that? Is that already out? Yes. And I will tell you, but I have to whisper it because my daughter's right here. Where are you? So this is one of my jokes that I, um, can you see me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, God. You know what? This is literally, as soon as this is over, there will be more necks done in America. It's like, it's crazy. <laughs> For Me plastic too. surgeons, that this is I, done. Like, who can look at themselves this much? I know, look, I, I, I want to do the whole show like this. That's better light. I know. I want to do a handstand and get a staple gun. I, um... The so online I, beauty community is in a crisis. Because, like, as the Botox wears off, we're about to stop seeing a lot of people at all. I told you. As soon as the plague is over, I'm going to get some plague directly injected into my forehead. Yeah, me too. Uh, but, but I want to hear the joke. Just whisper it to us. Oh, so I went to the doctor and I said, why does it hurt so much to have sex besides the fact that I hate my boyfriend? And she said, because as we age, your vaginal walls get thinner. So I said, so the only part of my body after doing like spinning and lifting weights that's ever going to be thinner is my vagina, a part of my body that literally no one will ever see. No one. I will never be walking down the street and go, oh my God, her vagina is so thin in person. It looks heavy on TV, but it's tiny. <laughs> Wait, I loved that movie about your vagina. If these walls could talk. <laughs> so, okay, now we're going back into the kitchen where my daughter can hear it. Okay, so so it's 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 um, it's in um, it, it, it's on Showtime right now. It's on Showtime. Okay. You know, you're hired. It's on Showtime. It's so funny. Carol Montgomery, Carol Leifer, Tammy Pescatelli. Um, oh, my God. She's so hilarious, and I can't think. But, oh, my God. You have to. Thea Vidal. Oh, God, I can't. Julia Scotty. Hilarious. Julia Scotty. Um, yeah, you have to see. You have to see all of them. Well, I will. I will. Amazing. Well, while you're here, Levi's harassing me down in the waiting room. So why don't I complete this a very sordid wedding reunion and add him to our little foursome? I just Please want to sing. I know, but say, you can say hi first. He's okay. a Please welcome Levi Christ, Tony Winner. Hey. Hey. Oh, this is so cool. Caroline didn't get the memo on the costuming of Reds, but thank you for... Uh, you 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 match me and Emerson. Look, we 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 did. I this. wouldn't change clothes, so I would blend in. I thought we I feel we, like we're we, we actually were really good together. Yeah, and you're you got, such a good homosexual. You got you got your butch cap on. You look well, like this is because I'm you know as all of us in quarantine, I'm beginning to Levi? experience the horror of like eyebrows that look like my 92 year old aunt. You know, you don't like, have any tweezers. 
like like well you, they get really long is the problem and i can't seem to find I, I i'm afraid to trim them and have them disappear no oh, yeah you don't want to do you got to put a comb over it and use the little like guard oh no it's, masters do it but i'm just afraid to initiate myself into such a and my hair is just way out of i mean it's just all mine right. too levi it's just so me. flat i just feel it's flat I need grooming. Uh, but but the, but here's the, now here this this is you know a straight talk real gay. Here's my tip: get your you have one of those clippers, put number three on it, put number three on it, and go over the eyebrows. It's perfect. But as Emerson will attest, one time when we were on the road, I accidentally put number one and a half, and I had one complete bald eye eyebrow for like two weeks. <laughs> it was like. He looked like permanent, like he was permanently raising an eyebrow because one was sort of faint. I, I went over, I knocked on Emerson's door and I said, can you tell that I only have one eyebrow? <laughs> <laughs> and they're already blonde anyway, so. Yeah. So, well, are you going to How are things in the backwoods? Well, I keep wanting to go outside to give myself a break from these walls here, but I end up getting ticks. I can't hear real, you. Real intense tick season here in East Tennessee, and I've pulled oh. out of me already. So you got to be careful of the Lyme disease. Yes. Can I tell you a weird story? When I was like in middle school, I went to Boy Scout camp in the woods in Houston, and I got a tick in my taint. No! And not only that, you know, I'm like... 14 and I don't know what to do. So I had to go to the camp medical doctor to get the tweezers and he had, I had to lift up my balls while he pulled the tick out with tweezers. And because of, you know, working with adolescents, our camp director had to be in the room for sexual harassment and issues. So he's standing in the corner trying not to look. I'm like tucked with my hands holding my balls up as this man pulls a tick out of my tank. You're welcome. Okay, I you I should be on I would I would, have, I would, I would have have never hearing that story. You're welcome. <laughs> I could do. It. You can I have a visual now forever. Tick taint yeah. toe. <laughs> Shut up! I hate you. Tick taint toe. You are so stupid. Leave <laughs> hey, hey, I, I, I couldn't have edited this better. Caroline just disappeared in the moment. Caroline, how are you, sweetie? She just came right back into frame. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I Hell, can't hear if that doesn't move us along to a hymn and celebration of our Lord, I don't know what does. <laughs> yes. Uh, Ain't that the truth? Levi, I tell us about the show. An all gospel hour on Sunday at I 5 can't o'clock. Hear him. If anybody wants to join me on Facebook. At 5 o'clock Eastern on Facebook. 5 o'clock Eastern on Sunday, it is an all gospel Easter <laughs> hour. I have Amazing. By one of the, I, I still have people talk about that year on Colbath Avenue, when I had that Easter brunch, and you stood up, and nobody, you was before the Tony, and I said, oh, I have a friend here, and you sang How Great Thou Art, and it was ridiculous. So oh I would, Maybe I'll do that on Sunday. That's a good idea, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey. How great thou art. Also, I have that recording of, hear him. well, everybody else can, so just be quiet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go in the living room. <laughs> um, that recording of It Is Well With My Soul that you and Darcy did that you put on the gospel according to Levi, I listened to it all the time. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was a lot of fun to do. And that's one of my favorite hymns. Um, all right. Well, so I'm going to make you the big screen, everybody. Please welcome to the stage, Tony winner, actor, <laughs> vocalist extraordinaire, Levi Cries. Where do I go when, when there's no one there? Turn to who do I talk to when nobody wants to listen? Who do I lean on when there's no foundation stable? I go to the rock, I know he's stable. I go home to the rock, I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountains and the mountains dance about me. When the earth all around me sink in sin, on crash the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the right. I go to the rock of my salvation. 
I go to the stone and the builders reject me. I run to the mountains and the mountain stands by me. Well, they heard all around me the sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, but when I need a friend, when I need a shelter, when I need a friend, when I need a shelter. When I need a friend, I go to the right, oh Lord. How about that? Oh, God, that was amazing. Thank you. Ah, oh, more, more, more. What it was one of the first gospel songs I ever, I ever heard in my local church here. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Just because you mentioned it, Dale. It's it's Donnie Rambo, and I believe that uh, Whitney did that in the in the the preacher's wife. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. that's a great. Oh, that's I, got the, I got the I got the God and the gay in there. Yes, all yes. of it. I mean, it's the best way. Then sing my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to me, how great thou art. How great thou art. All right. Just a little bit for you, Dad. Thank you. I cannot wait till Sunday. Levi, you are truly one of my favorite vocalists. And if you have never seen Levi Christ live, which we will all get to do again at some point in our lives, <laughs> it is electrifying. It is truly one of it's a spiritual uh experience <laughs> it truly is thank you i can never decide whether i'm more grateful or more jealous of the gifts the lord bestowed upon you <laughs> oh, yeah. sure. so uh, you'll make sure you tune in to levi's show on sunday and also you've been doing live hours on instagram i have been i did a live hour last week i've got a lot with a new podcast the church of christ podcast a brand new album that everybody can stream called bad habit and yes, we've been taking every opportunity being home. I'm going store crazy. I got to get online. We did a whole hour concert on Instagram last week, and we'll probably do another one at some point this week. It's just been a lot of fun to connect with people that way. Yeah. Uh, blessing us with your gifts. Well, thank you for, for being with us today. We love you. You are our brother. I love that you guys are doing the Dylan Emerson show again. It's hey, so we, we have nothing else to do. So we got to figure out something to pass the time. Yeah. Um, oh, and also you can stream Southern Baptist Sissies on Broadway HD. Levi Christ performing the soundtrack, the original song written for the movie. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and truly the opening of that film with Pass Me Not, Old Gentle Savior, one of my favorite openings. Of, of and he opens a very sordid wedding and he plays the preacher in that. You All know, my experience, my favorite experiences have been with this family right here. So well, we we love you. We love you too. And it all started. We we just returned. You know, you didn't get to to come see it, but we were back at the theater, theater, huh? Yeah, we had a great little run there with this side of crazy. So lots of memories we have together. Yeah. And we have a, and, and you know, they were talking. We were talking about Twist earlier in the show. We got a few memories in Miami at uh, at Twist Bar too. When we were tell your audience about that, I we sure do. I believe we won a hundred dollars, if I'm not mistaken. Listen. Oh, what are the days. Well, Levi, thank there, you so much for joining us. That remain un. <clears throat> Reveal. Uh huh. And on that note, <laughs> Levi, thanks for joining us. I cannot even. I can't even believe that I embarrassed you slightly. You kind of did. I'm red. You're a little bit red, Levi. We love you. Thank you for doing the show. Love you, guys. We love you, friend. Yeah, y'all watch the show on Sunday. I will be there in that room, so it'll be a lot of fun. And we have some other shows coming up that we really want to plug. Our friend shows. We got before Matt. we get to that. 
let's, uh, if you are enjoying the show, uh, you can send us a dollar, send us $5, send us $10. Uh, if you don't have any money, thank you for joining us. Please share the show as the broadcast finishes. Tell other people to tune in. Join us on Tuesday. Uh, but you can send us a buck or three. Uh, Venmo at Emerson Collins. It's in the banner at the bottom of the screen. Or on PayPal to BeardCollinsShoresProductions.com. And I promise to split it with Dell evenly and we love we really do love doing this show so thank you so much for joining us last week and the week before i mean we were we're, we're hitting over five thousand people that are viewing our show so we really appreciate you sharing and please share the show and uh, it's just an hour of escape that we can all escape together and y'all help us too so thank you so much so okay well let's plug our friend show i've got matt yee's virtual birthday my buddy matt He's doing his adult sing-along party, Old Chinese Man Show. And that is when, Emerson? That is on, on Saturday at 6 p.m. Pacific. And then on Sunday, you need to join Levi at 2 o'clock Eastern uh, for his gospel hour. And then our dear friend, Debbie Holiday has done for several weeks now an incredible Sunday night show. She does it at 7 p.m. Pacific. It's a late night show for the East Coast. And when I tell you that her just sitting in her living room, just wailing away on with that incredible voice. I mean, the two of them are the most talented vocalists we know. And so you can get yourself a Sunday double I, bill. What? I said, we know her. I know Debbie Holiday because of Levi Christ introducing me to her. And we will have her on the show very soon. Yes, we will beg her to come be our special guest artist. Um, but I mean, that the soulful, her sound, it's one of those like, put it on and watch it or put it on and turn the volume up and just like lounge in your room and let her wrap you in those vocals. I mean, it is just a voice to fill your spirit and move your soul. Um, and then also Sunday night, uh, Uncabaret is back uh, with Alec Mappa that was on the show on Tuesday. So lots of entertainment options from people that we love dearly for you to check out. And we'll be back on Tuesday and we'll announce the guests for that when we put up the notification for the show. So thank you all for joining us today. Y'all have a, a great holiday, um, no matter what you believe, what, no matter what you do, just enjoy something. And oh. go, go. Oh, and one more. Michael Taylor Gray, one of the original Southern Baptist sissies, said he does an IMRU radio magazine every Monday from 7 to 8 p.m. on KPFK 90.7, and, and you can stream it at kpfk.org. So lots of shows. Oh, and just, just for fun, um, Elizabeth Wiggins is in the house. I see it. It's her birthday. So happy birthday. Happy Elizabeth. birthday, Elizabeth. All right. I'm just now looking at the messages. You guys, thank you so much. I'm seeing all these sweet comments. We love doing this show. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we will see you on Tuesday at four o'clock. Thank you all. Send us your tips. But seriously, though, I'm so poor. Bye, y'all.